Hey, what's up, JoJo in the morning family? I hope everybody is having a really, really good day. This morning I was reading the Word and I ran across a scripture that just fired me up. I don't know about you, but have you ever been reading a scripture and, and you just stopped on something and just got super just encouraged by the word? Now, I, I want you to know if you hear a bunch of stuff in the background, I love it. This is cool. Right to this side of me, some people are building. Around the corner, somebody's building a new house. Right here, somebody's building a new house. The house next to me is adding onto their house. People are building. It is a building season. People are building everywhere. Drop my glasses. Everywhere that you turn. This one I read the scripture too, okay? This is in John 14, 18. I promise that I will never leave you helpless or abandoned. I'll never leave you helpless or abandon you as orphans i will never leave you helpless or abandon you as an orphan you got it he will never leave you helpless and he will never abandon you as an orphan. You have a father who you can call on at any time. My three kids can call me at school, on a trip, whatever. They're my kids. God the Father is God. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to the earth to teach and preach and manifest the kingdom of God and die on the cross for our sins. And Jesus said this, but that he could be the right hand of the Father, so he would, the Father, he, the Father, would send the Holy Spirit, which is with us. You should never, ever, ever feel alone. You should never feel abandoned. You should never feel helpless. You should never feel hopeless. I know if I'm ever going through a, a rough spot, having a bad day, something's not going right, I just start praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. I start getting one of my, I got different books and journals everywhere all around me, one of my journals, and I start prophesying those prophetic words. I start declaring those prophetic words. You know, over the past few days, I've been coming straight at you at JoJo in the morning because I wanted you to know that it's a building season. And next week, I'm going to be speaking truth to you. It's a building season. Now, in a building season, you know, you, you do naturally. You get nervous or fearful or scared. I'm going to do something I've never done before. Um, you know, but, but you got to understand that he will never leave you. So in saying that, have confidence as you step forth. I was talking to about three different people in our church recently, and they were all talking about things they know God's called them to do. And it was unique to see the different places these people were at mentally one was like oh yeah god called me to do this and this and that and i'm gonna go do it and, and just all the stuff then somebody else was kind of like well i've never really stepped out of my comfort zone i've always just kind of you know and and, and the other person's scared to death <laughs> i said look you know god didn't promise that this life was going to be rainbows in a field of tulips and it was going to be great and easy. <laughs> he promised us that he would never leave us helpless and that he wouldn't abandon us as orphans. Okay? So, to the people watching that are realizing the fact that God is about to call you to do some pretty amazing things, like 
super amazing. I'll tell you what, different people that watch JoJo in the morning, they send me these emails. <laughs> I get so fired up when I read some of them. I was reading one, and this this, this man said, hey, man, you know, worked at this, this company, and you can retire 25 years, but I went ahead and worked 30. Good job. Great benefits. Good retirement package. And he said, the closer I got to retirement, God would show me what he wanted me to do. Start this new adventure. He said, my wife's on board. My kids are like, Dad, that's cool. Go for it. He said, I had a job that was great for my family. I didn't mind doing it. But now I have financial stability and getting going, I'm getting retirement because I invested. But now I got these dreams in me. And I've realized <laughs> there's nothing holding me back. You know, I financially, I'm good. So I don't have to worry about finances. But now I got this opportunity and I'm super excited. I told another friend of mine, the other day, and he's like, Joe, and I, he's got a very successful business, and he's been running his business for years, and uh, he chose to do the one-man business. Um, his wife takes all the, the calls and runs the paperwork and stuff, but he, he goes out and he does plumbing. And he's done well for himself, smart with money, hard worker. And he said, the Lord told him a few years back, good preacher that you've always wanted to pastor now that i've got you financially set you can pastor that's good but for some people you may not be retirement age but god is calling you to do something i'm in my home office right now my, my built my wife's dream home In the middle of a shaky economy, <laughs> lots of people I know stopped building in that. I didn't. God said, keep building. I entrepreneured some businesses in a shaky economy the last three years, and they grew. Because I'm not scared to do it. When a plane takes off, it flies into the wind. That makes no sense. It's easier to get lift up when the wind's blowing in your face. We're in a building season. So, as I get ready to start this mentoring in the next three to four weeks, I'm going to ask you and dive into your personal life for the people who choose that part of the mentoring. I'm going to ask you a lot of different questions, but, but I want you to ask yourself these questions right now. What am I doing to position myself for what God is speaking? Like there's a season in my life I remember. The Lord said for six months, I want you to pray Fast, read the word. That was it. Six months. I would travel and preach on the weekends. But well, Monday through Friday, I talked to my cousin. He had a church, a good church. Believed in the hope, moving the Holy Spirit. He let me go in the sanctuary. I dropped my kids off at school. They were little. And I would, I'd go in the sanctuary. Sometimes I'd walk, pick the kids up, and I'd come home five or six, prayed seven, eight hours a day. That's what God called me to do. Sometimes God calls me to do other things and just work on these other things. Work on writing a book. Do a lot of content for YouTube. Work on health coaching. Write books. 
We spend a lot of time on Aurora Church. Whatever it is. Speak at business conferences. Whatever it is. What are you doing right now according to what God is saying right now? Like, when I got ready to get into the rent house business, I started buying books. I started meeting with people who had rent houses. I explored every avenue. Low-end houses, high-end houses, multifamily units. Went and talked to some people who had HUD, who did that. Um, just all types. Of, I just studied and learned a whole lot. When I felt the Lord call me to travel and ministry, I called a bunch of people who travel and talked to them. When I really knew that God was calling me to be an apostle, I met with a lot of apostles. Before I got married, I, I found about three men that I really admired. And I, and I said, hey, every time I see your wife, she's smiling. Why? And they gave me advice. I remember I found the, the guy that had the, the best kids I knew. I said, hey, I want to have kids like yours. Act, act like your kids. I mean, talk to me. Wherever you're at, you need people speaking into your life. You already know, number one, this is supernatural, that God will never leave you helpless or abandon you as an orphan. Two, the Bible says there's safety more to the counselors. What are you putting around you? The Bible in Proverbs, I love it because Proverbs talks about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge is a book somebody wrote. There's a book I love right here. Todd Smith put it together. Igniting Revival Fires by Destiny Image. And it's got 70 different authors in there. Yes, I am one of them. Along with some people like Bill Johnson, Sid Roth, Randy Clark, John Kilpatrick, John Arnett. Reading books like this on knowledge help you. What are you doing? And how are you applying application and action to your life to make things happen? Who holds you accountable? I, one of my business coaches messages me every week. I'm on a weekly training with, with, with these business coaches. High level leaders run with high level leaders. I got ministry friends that I'm in constant communication with. My wife is a high-level leader. We talk all the time. We are iron sharpens iron. I mean, you you need folks like luck. Uh, my wife is currently on a three, four-day trip with some other ladies who do ministry, but also they are in a business together. And so they're together for three, four days, and they are... Iron sharpens iron. Business and ministry, building relationship, and having a whole lot of fun in a really cool town, in a really cool condo on a lake. See, you got to put yourself around the right people. Yep. It's a good season. I don't know if y'all can hear those, those hammers and those saws and and a concrete truck just left one house. I love having building all around me. It just inspires me to build. All right, guys. I hope you have a super good day. Super good day. Love y'all.